Bienvenidos mis amigos. ¿A dónde está? ¿Cómo están, amén? My name is LJ and this is Now Playing. And I want to introduce you to my world. Now, what we're God damn it! What we're playing right now. And what we're playing right now is a game called Montezuma's Return. Now, I grew up in the 90s. And when I was in elementary school, there was this computer that we used to have. I believe it was in 6th grade. And they used to have things called floppy disks. Now these floppy disks contain many video games, which we hold and cherish today because they're awesome. And uh, we take for granted floppy disks because they, they aren't really widely used today. They're used mainly by hardcore gamers or people who, you know, they have those types of computers. But a lot of the games they had were pretty cool. One such game they had was Montezuma's Revenge, and I remember this game because it was uh, one of the games that I would kill a lot of time to whenever the teacher let us. And because it was on a floppy disk, I remember we would usually fight over the game in class to see who would get to play it. And it was a pretty cool game. Oh, that was cool. But this game is not as good as its predecessor. This is a sequel that was originally released on PC as like a first-person view game, similar to, I guess, I guess you could say Mirror's Edge. Um, it's like a Mirror's Edge slash Tomb Raider type game. And this game is very different from that. This game was, uh, in the format that's presented in now, this is kind of how it looked whenever it was on the PC. And I don't know exactly what kind of computer it was. It could have been a Commodore. I'm not exactly sure. But I know that, uh, Montezuma's Revenge was released on the Commodore and the Atari. If you ever get a chance, and you have an Atari 2600 probably, I would highly recommend getting Montezuma's Revenge. <coughs> it's quite a pricey game, but it is really good. It's kind of like Super Mario Bros. versus meets The Legend of Zelda. And it's interesting, that's the first time I made that jump. It's interesting because not only is the game challenging, but it's also fun. This version of the game is straight up challenging. And it takes a lot of trial and error before you can get it right. Now let me show you this. See how that skull is bouncing down there? That is bullshit. And I would normally just, you know, oh, okay, rah, 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 rah. But the thing is, there's no way around that. So you have to either have a knife on you to kill it, or just jump to your death. I don't know if this was a thing from the original. I've seen a map like this before. But anyways, I was kind of upset whenever I... Ooh, that's cool. I like this I was kind of upset whenever I, I got to this point, I was like, I have to die? I was on my last dude, and uh, it's really upsetting to have to die on your last dude, because you didn't have a choice. You did not have a freaking choice, dude. So anyways, I got a key! Na, 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 na. By the way, for those of you who don't know or don't care, Montezuma's Revenge was actually a colloquial term, or like a slang term, for Traveler's Diarrhea. Yeah, Montezuma's Revenge. And I, th I think that's kind of, uh... Ah, oh, god dang it! I think it's kind of messed up, but it's also funny, because it's kind of like one of those things where, like, you know, you can say, like, like, dude, why are you so in the bathroom so long? Montezuma's Revenge, and they'll get it. You know, it didn't have to be a video game pun, it just had to be, like, a metaphor. It's kind of like saying, you know, you were dropping the kids off in the pool. Oh, that's cool, I've never done that before. This is actually the farthest... Farthest... The farthest I've ever made it in this game, and I might not succeed enough to uh, give you a thorough review, but I just want to show you what this game looked like. I actually do not really like this game. I went through the trouble of looking for it and then ordering it, and I was just not very happy playing it. But it's, it's, a, it's an okay game. I mean, it's because I personally don't like it doesn't mean it's not an enjoyable adventure for someone. Someone out there is like, oh my god, this game looks awesome, and I'm over here like, oh, I freaking hate it, blah. I'm gonna it. I don't actually hate this game, I just I just kind of don't like the unfairness of it. And some parts of it are just drop dead unfair. Like, where am I supposed to go here? Oh, let's try this out. Ah, you piece of... I was gonna jump there. My biggest gripe with this music... <coughs> this game is probably the music. I don't have Montezuma's Revenge, but I definitely do have a cold, so... <coughs> I'm gonna try giving this game another go, but I'm gonna try going the opposite direction. Jump cut! One thing that kind of, uh... One thing that kind of bothered me about this game was the difficulty. And it's not really difficulty in the sense of it's a hard game. It's strategy, and it's kind of a frustrating strategy where you have to 
trial and error your way through it. Like I said, that other playthrough was the farthest I had ever made it uh, in this game. And it's kind of surprising because I guess I was just playing on a whim and not really paying attention to where I was going, but I'm, I'm used to games like this. Oh, that was cool. Oh, I killed him with a knife. I'm kind of used to games like this, like, ah, like Donkey Kong and stuff like that. So I'm used to the, the shallow jumps and the, the one death falls and stuff like that. Yeah! So it's, it's kind of second nature to me to, to kind of uh, do this kind of stuff. So anyways, this, this is pretty much all there is to show to the game. You can change the color. And you're probably also wondering why I'm showing this on that Super Game Boy. Well, that's easy. And so the bad guys can't see me bleed. No, not really. This is new. So anyways, oh, you son of a bitch. Montezuma's return for Game Boy. The reason I'm playing this on the Super Game Boy, by the way, is so you can actually see the screen, as opposed to not being able to see the screen and being increasingly frustrated by the shakiness of my hands as I frustratingly play this game and throw the controller against the wall. Let's see how far I made it real quick. Okay, I haven't made it very far. Alright, so gameplay. This game is kind of difficult. It is on the difficult side, I will give it that. But like I said, it's like a bullshit difficulty. It's like a like a trial and error difficulty. And I kind of have a problem with these games which involve trial and error difficulty because it makes the player feel like a failure whenever they mess up. But it's kind of like one of those things where it's a, it's a life lesson and, you know, you failed because of you, not because of the game. But the game punishes you when you fail. And I, I guess there's a reason behind that. And I want to say that, you know, it's because the developers were trying to get people used to the original game. Ah! But at the same time, like, I mean, you know, it could have at least, like, explained things. I guess it's the reason they have instruction manuals. <laughs> so, anyways. Uh, the music gets kind of frustrating. But anyways. Gameplay, this game, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. Because it's just a really messed up way to torture the player. And I don't really like... I don't really like games that punish the player. I just say that it's not... I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that I screwed up and I just suck at this game. Which I do. But it has a lot of potential. And it's probably better as a first-person game. But Montezuma's Revenge was awesome. It was just as difficult. But at least Montezuma's Revenge, I can excuse it because it was an older game. If this game is a newer game. It's for Game Boy. And even with the color, it's hard to tell what the hell is going on. And I tried to adjust the color so I was able to see what's going on in the background. And I still couldn't tell a platform from a decoration in the background. So you can see that block right next to him. It looks like a platform. So, gameplay, I'm going to give it, uh, yeah, 2 out of 5. Graphics, the graphics are alright, but they're still really mushy. You know, even on a Game Boy Color, I'd have to show you a Game Boy Color version for you to know what I'm talking about. They probably look better on a Game Boy Color. Slightly, but I mean the palette of a Game Boy Color is very limited to begin with Not this limited, but God it's limited <coughs> So graphics I'm gonna give it a three out of five because I tried it looks all right You can tell the skulls right there look not bad uh, But when you're playing on an original Game Boy, it is difficult to tell what's what unless you know the game like the back of your head <coughs> So three out of five sound the sound is annoying I usually forgive Game Boy games because they're trying to emulate the NES, but this game, this game is annoying in terms of the sound. When you turn, check this out, whenever you turn the music off, okay, I turn the music off, I'm going to start the game, the music is still playing, yo. Start game, look. But, now there's no music, so now it sounds kind of like an Atari game, which is cool with me. But I was just like, I hate games like that. There's a lot of them, especially on, like, the Super Nintendo and crap. Mortal Kombat 2 was like that, where you turn off the music and it still plays on certain parts. I think it was Mortal Kombat 2 and Mortal Kombat 1. Anyways, um, music, I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5. I just don't like how annoying the music is and the sound. The sound is... I guess I could forgive the sound effects, but the music is just flat out annoying. Even on this thing. You think it's annoying on a Game Boy, like, the Super Game Boy is twice as bad. So, overall, I'm going to give this game a uh, 3 out of 5. I say try it, but don't buy it. It's a frustrating adventure. This is me playing, by the way. It's a frustrating adventure. It takes a lot of trial and error. I don't know if it's worth the money you could pay on it. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. 
but it is kind of frustrating, and if you're into that type of challenge, by all means, buy this game, but I kind of, uh, can't really justify paying pennies for this game whenever... Ooh, I'm here again. Ah, goddammit! I can't really justify buying pennies for this game whenever I myself don't really like it, so... Anyways, that's my review of this game. Thank you very much, and please don't get Traveler's Diary whenever you're traveling. Thank you very much. My name is LJ, and you have a nice day. Adios, my amigos.